Uh, hi, I'm, I'm Scott Kastner. I'm a professor in the Department of Government and Politics at the University of Maryland College Park. I was at the U.S. Institute of Peace today uh, to give a talk on U.S.-China-Taiwan relations. <music> The relationship across the Taiwan Strait is contentious in large part because um, at stake is an underlying sovereignty dispute, right? And so it's something that uh, concerns kind of the core interests of the different stakeholders. It's a dispute that goes back to the end of the Chinese Civil War uh, when the, uh, the Chinese Communist Party prevailed and set up the, the People's Republic of China and the Nationalist Party retreated to the island of Taiwan with their government, the, the Republic of China. Uh, initially, for years, this was a dispute that kind of centered on which of these governments was the rightful government of all of China, both claimed to be. Um, but in more recent years, uh, as Taiwan democratized, uh, this kind of question of whether Taiwan should be thought of as Chinese has become kind of more openly debated within Taiwan, even as the, the PRC continues to kind of view Taiwan as largely unfinished business from the, the Chinese Civil War um, and view Taiwan as, as, as a place that must be unified with, with China. This question kind of involves the United States, um, in large part because the United States has a long-standing security relationship with Taiwan. Um, the U.S. was allies with the Republic of China government um, during World War II. Uh, it provided aid to the nationalist government during the Civil War. Uh, it intervened in the Taiwan Strait um, after the, the, um, the ROC government um, retreated to the island of Taiwan um, and was uh, entered into a formal alliance treaty with the ROC government in the 1950s. Um, even though the U.S. doesn't have an alliance treaty with Taiwan anymore, um, it continues to maintain kind of extensive, um, technically unofficial security ties with the island. So uh, my view is that a war in the Taiwan Strait is something that's a real possibility. Uh, this is by far the most dangerous issue in the broader U.S.-China relationship. It's the, the single issue that could most realistically lead to military conflict between the U.S. and China. Um, and it's uh, probably the most dangerous potential flashpoint for conflict in East Asia today. That said, I, I don't view war as um, inevitable by any means, um, or even necessarily highly probable. Um, I think that, uh, that there are uh, continue to be kind of significant uh, mitigating factors in place that give all three kind of key parties, Taiwan, uh, the PRC, the United States, uh, an interest in preventing the war outcome. Um, most obvious uh, that a war would be enormously disruptive and costly to, to all three parties. Uh, and so I think that all three parties continue to have strong incentives to avoid uh, that kind of an outcome. In my view, um, and I'll answer this from the U.S. perspective, um, avoiding military conflict kind of involves kind of a complex mix of uh, policies toward the Taiwan Strait coming from Washington. So on the one hand, it's important for the United States to, uh, to, to make it such that the PRC would likely face very high costs and a lot of uncertainty about prevailing in the event of military conflict. In other words, the U.S. needs to do things to uh, to enhance and maintain robust deterrence uh, in the region um, by maintaining a, a robust presence in the region, by maintaining strong alliances in the region, and by encouraging Taiwan to invest uh, extensively in its own defense capabilities. But the flip side is that uh, I think it's also important for the United States to do things that give China uh, a strong stake in a peaceful status quo. Um, so China should also uh, feel that its interests are served by not pursuing a military course of action in the Taiwan Strait. Um, and, and this means uh, keeping dialogue open with China and I think kind of avoiding moving into kind of a world where the U.S.-China relationship kind of resembles a new Cold War uh, where PRC leaders feel um, less invested in the current global order um, and, and, then, and hence kind of potentially more willing to contemplate use of military force uh, in a case like Taiwan.